full of CO2 and alcohol and starts turning that into what we know as beer. It spends about six days in alpha fermentation and then it comes here. So this is secondary fermentation. Or chips is what we call it. We call it chips because in all of our Bud Light and all of our Budweiser, all these tanks, we stuff them full of chips and then put the beer in there. So and it spends 21 days in chips maturing. So if you actually look up what lagering means, it means to mature or rest. And that's why a lager is different than an IPA. So it spends about 21 days in these chip tanks. And the reason we put the beechwood in there, which you mentioned, somebody, you mentioned the, the creed and why we use beechwood. The reason we put that in there is because it doesn't add any flavor to the beer. You know, it's not like an oak wine barrel. We put a bunch of wine in an oak barrel and we want those tannins and those oak notes. We put this in here, which is very mild. If you smell it, it doesn't smell like anything. If you taste it, it doesn't taste like anything because it provides a nice little platform for that yeast to settle out in secondary fermentation and just rest on the chips. Oh. And then we pull it out of here, pass it through a filter, and then send it over to package. The whole process for Bud Bud Light takes about 30 days. Some other brands, a little quicker, Bud Bud Light are our longest cycle brands. But they spend about 21 days inside these tanks with uh, chips. And we have, you know, I, I don't know how many tanks are down there, but we have four floors of this all repeated. So it spends a long time oh. in the process. Each one of these is about 1,200 barrels. Excuse me? Light beer and regular beer. Uh, so there's a couple things that make a light beer versus a dark beer. One could be the ball. So you see this two row right here is very light, very light color. You know, if we were to take and roast this, it would do just like if uh, you roasted some bread or roasted a vegetable, it would start turning brown and, and turn a little bit of a color. So you use a different ball. You could get a darker beer or in that kettle when you're boiling, if you boil for a long time, it will actually develop a, a darker, richer note. So it's ultimately like some bread is, is a lighter color than some darker breads. It's the recipe and the ingredients that go into it. How much, uh, how many pounds of each one goes in each? So you guys walk past the torpedo, is what we call it. So those metal vessels are torpedoes. Every single chip tank that has butter bud light in it takes three torpedoes. So I don't know how many pounds are in each one of those, but uh, I'd say probably two or three hundred pounds a piece. And it takes two people to put them in there. So there's no robot that does it. You suit up, you open up this door, you crawl in there with a rake, somebody sits out here with a rake and pushes it in there. Shovel load by shovel load. Oh. And then once we finish, 21 days, we clean the tank, start it all over again. We clean between every single cycle. Yes, sir. So we reuse some of these, and what we do is we put in three, we'll take out one, add a new one. So about, it works out to about three cycles that we're using the chips. And these chips are all from uh, the St. Louis, Missouri region, and they're very uh, expensive. Uh, most of our bar hops come from uh, the north, northwest area. So if you think about some of the hop growing regions like Portland, those areas, we also get some from Palatine in Germany and some of the more traditional hop areas. All the hops don't come, none of the hops come from California. Uh, the barley comes from kind of the northwest as well. So none of the barley comes from California. Any other questions? All right, well, we are going to continue on this way. And uh, spend just a minute here. I never do a tour of our facility without coming into this room. Because this room and what we do in this area is what makes our beer great. So right now we're in the quality control lab. So you can see tons of instrumentation throughout the process. And we measure hundreds of things throughout the process to make sure our beer stay consistent. So it starts with the water. We measure pH. We measure how much solubles are in there. We measure alkalinity, those types of things. And we make subtle adjustments so that it hits our spec. Once we brew in, we measure several things throughout the process. Several things... Uh, whether it's alcohol potential in OG, whether it's volume, whether it's color, whether it's um, how much yeast we pitch, we do that as well. All the way down to this part is where we actually measure the oxygen and the amount of beer in the can. And that's what makes us great. Because if you think about it, 
we are taking a raw material from nature that changes with the weather, changes with the climate, changes with the region. We're bringing that into our process. We're making something out of it. And we're taking a living organism, throwing that in there, and we want it to be the exact same every single time. And you can't do that without data. You can't do that without a great quality lab. So I always like to come in here because this is what makes us great. Our brewmasters take this data, they make subtle tweaks in the, re in the recipes and adjustments to make sure the Budweiser here tastes the same as the Budweiser in Jacksonville, tastes the same as the Budweiser in Baldwinsville, New York. And then just to elaborate a little bit, um, since we do have one of our maintenance techs on the tour, we won't embarrass him too much by telling us about seams. <laughs> but not only does it matter about the brewing process, it also matters about the package. So what you can see here is the past several shifts of cans where we actually take a can, we cut down a can and evaluate that we have a good seam. So I'll show you a, a empty can and a lid when we get out there. But we actually cut it down, make sure that we have a good seam, make sure that seam is formed properly so that we don't leak air or beer in the process. Um, and, and we do it on every single shift on multiple different lines. Um, it's very important because there's three things that really hurt beer. One being light. So that's why canned beer is pretty good because you can't really get light in there. Two being oxygen, and that's why that seal is very important. Make sure that's sealed up so that no oxygen or beer or anything gets out. And the third being heat. So that's why we always say don't you know, leave your beer in the back of your trunk because it's not going to taste good. Those are the three things that really hurt beer, and if you can protect your beer from those, it's going to last much longer. But yeah, this I, I love coming into Quality Lab because this is what makes our beers great and consistent. And consistent beer is normally great beer. The water goes through a filtration process. Yes, um, so obviously it's filtered at the city before it comes to us, and then we, we put it through some filtration processes, then adjust it for alkalinity, et cetera. And each, each brewery adjusts their water differently or filters differently. So in Jacksonville, we had wells that we actually pulled out of the aquifer, um, and, uh, and here we get it from the city. So it's a little more variable coming from the city versus coming out of the well. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. When we leave the doors, if you'll put your earplugs back in, we're going to head on over to the can lines. together today.